A few of Russia's feared thermobaric missile launchers have been entering the Ukraine, which means that large parts of Ukrainian suburbs could soon be vacuum bombed, leading to massive civilian casualties. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that Ukraine's ambassador to the U.S. says Russia has started using thermobaric weapons to bomb Ukrainian cities. This comes in the wake of multiple social media posts showing TOS-1 thermobaric missile launchers entering Ukraine. The TOS-1 vehicle can fire 24 thermobaric missiles in 15 seconds, and each missile can destroy buildings within hundreds of meters of the detonation point. The missile can be fired up to 6 kilometers away. When it hits its target, an initial charge distributes an aerosol made up of very fine material, which could be anything from a carbon-based fuel to tiny metal particles. This highly flammable cloud is then ignited by a second charge. When the cloud erupts, it creates a massive shockwave, as well as a vacuum as it sucks up all surrounding oxygen. The blast wave can last for significantly longer than a conventional explosive and is capable of vaporizing human bodies. It is, however, designed to destroy defensive positions, which means it causes massive damage to city buildings, while also causing many human casualties. Dr. Marcus Hellyer of the Australian Strategic Policy Institute says it's only a matter of time before Russia starts using thermobaric weapons, as their use is pretty standard in terms of Russian warfare tactics. Hellyer said he expected to see more thermobaric warfare in Ukraine. Ukraine has been having success in using Turkish-made drones to infiltrate the airspace above invading Russian convoys and turning the convoys into exploding fireballs. Here are the details. The Wall Street Journal reports that the Ukrainian Air Force is crediting its new Turkish-made drones with destroying a large number of Russian weapon systems with guided bombs. The chief commander of Ukraine's armed forces, Valery Zaluzny, posted a video of such a drone strike turning multiple Russian trucks into a fireball, adding the comment, Welcome to hell. The video was posted on Facebook with text that says the Bayraktar drone struck a Russian convoy near the city of Melin, around 97 kilometers northwest of the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. A few such videos show multiple bombs hitting Russian weapon systems in wooded areas and in convoys. The drones seem to be very effective at exploiting long Russian military convoys stuck in traffic jams. These stuck convoys present the drones with the opportunity to target an explosive-laden target like a supply truck. Once the truck and its explosives are hit, the massive explosion often blows up multiple surrounding vehicles and troops. Russian troops have been seen deploying anti-aircraft missiles effectively against such drones. Ukraine began receiving shipments of the drones in 2019. The drone's primary function is to use its high-powered cameras to view the battlefield and laser-correct artillery strikes. It can stay aloft for 24 hours, flying at a maximum altitude of 7.6 kilometers. A remote pilot can fly the drone from as far away as 300 kilometers in good weather. A cruise missile with a nuclear warhead at the front and a nuclear engine at the rear, plus a massive underwater drone designed to cause radioactive tsunamis. These are just two of the new weapons that Russia is testing right now. Here are the details. CNN reports satellite images show Russia seems to be preparing to test fire another one of its nuclear-powered cruise missiles. This comes just months after CNN reported on Russia's testing of a doomsday drone that's designed to cause massive tsunamis filled with radioactive material. The nuclear-powered missiles, codenamed Skyfall, are around 8 meters long and feature nuclear engines which allow them to fly incredibly long distances. Russia claims the missile can take any route to its target, and the U.S. says it's designed specifically to get around U.S. air defenses. In April, CNN reported on Russian tests of its new Poseidon 2M39 drone torpedo. Unlike conventional torpedoes, Russia says this behemoth can snoop around enemy defenses to sneak up to enemy coastal cities. Once in position, the huge device would set off its massive nuclear warhead to create large tsunami-like waves inundating cities and large areas of coastal land with radioactive particles, making the land uninhabitable for decades. The new torpedo and missile are part of Russia's drive to modernize its strategic nuclear arsenal. Alongside its development of these terrifying weapons, Russia is also building up its forces on its long northern border. Analysts say Moscow is preparing to dominate the Arctic Ocean as the waterway becomes more accessible because of thinning ice caused by global warming. Two weeks ago, Russian President Vladimir Putin told NBC that relations between Russia and the U.S. were at their lowest point in years. In the same interview, Putin was reminded that his counterpart in the U.S., President Joe Biden, had once said he had no soul. That was the slightly tense context for a summit meeting last week, in which Biden said he challenged Putin on human rights issues and cyber attacks targeted at U.S. infrastructure, according to CNN. 
Now it has emerged that tensions between the countries extend beyond macho posturing by the two leaders into ramped up military exercises in the Central Pacific Basin. Here's what you need to know. Russia has conducted its largest military exercises since the Cold War off the coast of Hawaii. Reports differ over the exact location of Russian activity, but a Russian Ministry of Defense account cited by The Drive said the exercises involved up to 20 surface warships, submarines, and support vessels, plus around the same number of aircraft. The exercises involved detecting, countering, and delivering missile strikes against the aircraft carrier strike group of a mock enemy. Simulated cruise missile strikes were carried out by the Slava-class cruiser, as well as an udaloy class destroyer and three Steraguchi-class corvettes. Also involved in the exercises were a pair of Tu-142M long-range anti-submarine aircraft from the Pacific Fleet's Naval Aviation Branch, escorted by MiG-31BM Foxhound interceptors. Six IL-38 anti-submarine aircraft were given the task of searching for and tracking submarines from the mock enemy group. The drive, citing CBS News, reports that on June 14th, three U.S. F-22A Raptor stealth fighters were scrambled in response to aircraft associated with the Russian naval exercise. Separately, the Honolulu Star Advertiser reported that on June 18th, a pair of F-22s was launched to investigate Russian air activity in the area. According to the drive, one unverified satellite image from June 19th shows Russian Navy vessels 35 nautical miles south of Honolulu, Hawaii, being escorted by three U.S. Navy Arleigh Burke-class destroyers and a U.S. Coast Guard Sentinel-class cutter. However, the Honolulu Star Advertiser quoted an anonymous U.S. official locating Russian vessels several hundred miles west of the Aloha State. Of course, Russia is not alone in conducting military exercises in the area. CBS reported on June 15th that a U.S. carrier strike group led by the USS Vinson was operating around 200 miles to the east of Hawaii, conducting a strike group certification exercise. The exercise was moved closer to Hawaii in response to the Russian exercise, and a U.S. Indo-Pacific Command spokesman told CBS, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command is monitoring the Russian vessels operating in international waters in the Western Pacific. He added, We operate in accordance with international law of the sea and in the air to ensure that all nations can do the same without fear or contest and in order to secure a free and open Indo-Pacific. As Russia operates within the region, it is expected to do so in accordance with international law. In this instance, Russia may well be on the right side of that line, with CBS citing U.S. defense officials who stated that Russian bombers did not enter Hawaii's air defense identification zone and were not intercepted. However, either way, it's clear that escalations like these do not happen by accident. Their meanings, both military and symbolic, are designed to be picked over carefully. There has been a serious confrontation between British and Russian forces in the Black Sea. It involved at least 20 aircraft and two Russian Coast Guard boats, which at times were just 100 meters or 328 feet away from a British warship. Here's what you need to know. The British warship HMS Defender has been involved in a confrontation with Russian forces within the 12-mile or 19-kilometer limit of Crimea's territorial waters, according to the BBC. Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine in 2014 in a move other nations considered illegitimate. BBC footage shows Russian jets sweeping down alongside the British vessel and contains the sounds of gunshots in the distance, but details outside of these are contested. The UK Ministry of Defense's position is that the HMS Defender was traveling through an internationally recognized transit route, and Russian vessels shadowed it in a routine manner, according to the BBC. It says any shots fired were part of a Russian gunnery exercise nearby. Russia, on the other hand, says it fired warning shots and dropped bombs to force the British Royal Navy destroyer to change routes, accusing the ship of violating its borders, according to Al Jazeera. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea allows for what it describes as innocent passage through a state's territorial sea and, according to the BBC, Britain's case is that its vessel was merely taking the most direct route between its starting point in Odessa, Ukraine, and its destination in Georgia. Russia contests this with its UK embassy tweeting that the HMS Defender's passage was a deliberate provocation rather than a legitimate routine transit. In January this year, it reacted similarly strongly when two U.S. Arleigh Burke-class destroyers entered the Black Sea. Tensions between Russia and NATO members have risen considerably in recent months, with Russian President Vladimir Putin telling NBC two weeks ago that relations between Russia and the U.S. were at their lowest point in years. 
Details recently emerged of the Russian Navy conducting some of its largest drills in the Central Pacific since the end of the Cold War, according to The Drive. Evidently, both sides are acting aggressively towards one another right now. For Britain's part, the movements of the HMS Defender can be seen as a specific test of Russia's resolve over Crimea, according to one retired colonel with Britain's Royal Marines who spoke to Reuters. Russia is trying to create facts on the ground and get them respected internationally so that their annexation is in effect rubber stamped by the world, he said. And what we're seeing is Britain's response. The Russian response, he added, is extraordinarily robust, a tad undiplomatic and way over the top. However, the BBC reports that Britain likely knew exactly what it was getting involved in here. Previous incidents would have told them what to expect and the provocation on Britain's part represents part of a new, deliberately forward-leaning defense policy, which it outlined in an integrated review three months ago. It committed, for instance, to exceeding its NATO spending commitments. More specifically, regarding Wednesday's Black Sea incident, one source told BBC diplomatic correspondent James Landale that the HMS Defender was not there to pick a fight, but to make a point, to assert its right to freedom of navigation in international waters. Clearly, the difference between picking a fight and making a point is a matter of semantics if, in the course of making your point, you are very much aware that you will start a fight. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.